This tutorial will guide you through the process of signing up for a Dippity account, adjusting your settings, and starting to build your own personal timeline. So, once you're on the Dippity homepage, if you're new to Dippity, you'll want to click the green Sign Up button. Otherwise, if you've already signed up for an account, log in as you normally would. A window will pop up and you'll be asked to enter in certain information. You'll need to choose a unique username, a password, and enter in a valid email address and your name. Click on the button below Last Name to agree to Dippity's Terms of Service, and then go ahead and create your account by clicking the large blue button. Another screen should appear with your name at the top and a blank timeline below. A window will pop up and ask you to add sources that you already use to be fed into your timeline automatically. You can click to add these from the list of sources provided, but we'll close this window for now so that I can go back later and show you how to add individual sources. The first thing you'll want to do is edit your account settings by clicking on the blue link below your name. This window should pop up. You can choose to upload a photo as your own personal icon. This can be a photo of yourself or any other image of your choosing. Click the Upload button to select a picture from your own collection, or paste an image URL in the space provided. You also have the option to type in a short bio, change your password, choose what kind of email notifications you wish to receive, and set your time zone. Once you are done with this, click the blue Save Changes button. Next, you can edit your timeline settings by clicking on the link to the left of Account Settings. A similar window will pop up. Here, you can change the title of your timeline if, for example, you are creating a specific themed timeline. You can then add a brief description. Now, upload an image just like you did for your account icon. You can choose to type something relevant to your timeline in the Tags column. For example, Summertime. We'll stick with the default mono theme, but you can choose to implement the free classic theme or to upgrade to premium themes. At the bottom, you can restrict viewership of your topic and give permission to a select number of friends or just you as editors of your topic. Save these settings when you are finished using the blue button at the bottom right of the window. To add friends, look below your timeline in the Your Friends box. As you might guess, you'll want to click the Find Friends button and follow the instructions to import your current friends from Twitter or find friends using your email address. Once you are done, click the blue Done button in the bottom right hand corner. Let's try adding an event. The Add an Event button should be in the upper left hand corner of your timeline. An event can really be anything from a party or concert you're attending to a trip you are taking. Here I'll type in a concert I'm going to this week. I'm sure you're catching on to how this works by now. Add information in the different boxes provided. Title your event, then add the date. You can add as much or as little detail to the event as you want. There is the option to add a description, upload a photo, post a link to a web page for the event, add in a location in the form of a street address, and even post a URL for a video. Once you've saved your event to your timeline, you can click on it and edit information or share the event with people on Facebook, StumbleUpon, and a number of other sites. 
If you want to use the Facebook Connect feature, just click on the little Facebook icon in the top right corner of the event and choose to connect with Facebook. You can publish a link to this event on your profile and on your friends' home pages. Another way to add things to your timeline is by feeding in information from external sources like blogs, Twitter, etc. To do this, click the blue Add a Source button to the left of the Add an Event button. A familiar window should pop up, the same one that showed up when we first created the account. I'm going to choose to import information from my Tumblr blog as well as my tweets from Twitter. Once you add these sources, Dippity will automatically update your timeline as you update your blog, Twitter, or whatever. Once you click the blue Done button, the page should automatically refresh itself and the sources you've added should show up. The last basic thing to understand is creating new topics. Click the My Topics tab at the top of the page. Here you can view all the topics you've created, but since we haven't created any yet, I'll click on the Create One Now link. A small window will pop up and you'll have to choose to do either a web search based topic, an RSS feed, or a blank topic, meaning you'll basically start from scratch. Finally, if you choose not to receive email notifications, you can check notifications manually by clicking the notifications link underneath your name. Now you're ready to go dip into Dippity.